Oh my goodness. Hi. You know what's funny was I was just wondering if you were going to come because I wanted to tell you about this show. I'm really excited about just if you don't mind staying a little far back. All right, let's just make sure we're safe. Okay, no one's going out. We're coming in. Uh, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, Rachel Stern's show, This Terrestrial Paradise. It's uh, at Ortega y Gasset Projects in Brooklyn. We're walking into this world that um, I feel like I'm in this cave of uh, symbolism. And um, I'm just going going about it in the way that I normally do my archaeological digs. And uh, I'm seeing some things that I can kind of pull apart, like these apple blossom trees. Uh, reminds me of, oh, I don't know. I grew up in Massachusetts. Reminds me also of Massachusetts. It's kind of like this cavern of curiosities. And like an allegorical story based loosely on Voltaire's Candide. Right? Is that what you told me? Yeah, I think that's right. This is kind of like the garden that the travelers cultivated. So, um, yeah. So there's the garden. This is, I guess, how you cultivate a garden. You use that thing. I think that's called a hoe. <laughs> um, and then there's greens and a fence. Also reminds me of Massachusetts. Here. Um, I do find other associations myself, though. I mean, I don't know why Cindy Sherman's here, but um, this is a person in a photograph in a frame, in a gold frame. This person has blue eyes, and they're holding a card that says pessimism, but it's funny. Do they look pessimistic? I'm not sure. I also know that Rachel does have some friends who um, kind of include some of their work, or I should say she allows them to put some of their work in her shows, kind of like a collaborative endeavor. And my understanding is that what's, what's on these stairs here. Again, going back to Voltaire and cultivating and guarding the best of possible worlds. You know, like we can't worry about that. We can't worry about what's good and bad or fake or real. I mean, we just can't. We just have to take care of ourselves ultimately, right? I think that's what Rachel's trying to prove there with her nipple hanging out. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is, that is Rachel. That's her self-portrait. She has this bubble over her head, which to me, man, that could be a number of things. It could be a thought bubble. <laughs> That's a big stretch. It could be, hmm, I don't know, based on some other artwork that she's seen maybe at the Met is another guess. Or maybe she's just uh, thinking about cleanliness. A general, um, you know, taking care of yourself. You see this? You have to get in real close for this one. Right in there, you can't really see it, but uh, she has that space in between her front teeth. It's, uh, my understanding is called uh, diastema. Something I'm uh, very envious of. I bet she can whistle really well through that. There is something though that I found with her work is that her special effects or visual effects are actually not done in Photoshop. This dog, is not done in Photoshop. This is all done in camera. In this majestic, what looks to be an entrance, um, I've seen doors like this. They, uh, they were in front of palaces. I've never lived in a palace. We only dreamt of living in a palace. I've lived in a loft before that felt a bit like a palace. Never lived in a palace. But this does remind me of the Royal Palace of Amsterdam. And, um, you know, looking at royalty, also, you know, the head of something, public versus private. I'm really liking, you know, this, like, trying to look for what's inside. Kind of like those Russian dolls, you know? Take them apart. There's more. There's more. <laughs> That's me digging inside of a Russian doll. This isn't a Russian doll. This is a cow. 
<laughs> and uh, this, uh, this says something to me about hope and magic. I mean, this is just a magical place. Be here all week. I'm so sorry, you caught me. I was daydreaming. I've been stuck inside a lot lately and I was just looking out this window, dreaming about being outside, but I'm glad you're here because now I can show you around this show by Kristen Mills at Ortega y Gasset Projects, um, which for me is really kind of working like a guide on how to be stuck inside and outside and how to sort of interact with the world. There's a couple things I want to show you. Can I first show you what I was looking at at this window? I was, I was taking in this view of these beautiful lasers and I was reminiscing about like high school and middle school and how cool it is when you get the opportunity to have your school portrait taken and you can kind of be transported into another world, like a laser world. And since I've been stuck alone in my apartment for a few months, that laser world is just looking really appealing right now. Um, so what happens is, you stand in front of the lasers, you strike a pose, and all of a sudden, you're in a laser world, just like that. Woo woo! Ursula loves it. She was born in a laser world. Actually, this is where Ursula comes from. Um, so if you come inside for a sec, oh my, I'm so embarrassed, I forgot to pick up my underwear. Just don't look, just don't look over here. Um, but this space is sort of nice because it houses the collection of trophies and rocks, which you can learn more about in some of Kristen's videos. Um, here you'll see this, these rocks being produced. There was a shortage of rocks at this yard sale and they needed to be sourced. And it just takes a really long time because as you see here, this team has to hand make each rock. And it's really a lot of effort that goes into this production of this super hot commodity, um, which we actually have some available here, uh, which is really nice. So it's one of the benefits of coming to see the show is you get to actually see some of these handmade rocks, stunning. And I mean, this kind of quality you really can't fake or replicate. Like, agreed. This is labor. Agreed. And um, I understand why they're in demand right now. There's a lot of shortages. This is the kind of thing that doesn't lose value, doesn't depreciate, deteriorate. It's really like you can't lose. 
So it's pretty exciting that we have all these rocks here. Do you need to charge your phone? Because, oh, okay, I forgot my charger actually. Plug it in right there. Um, something that's really special to me in this room that I do just want to draw your attention to is this detail here, which jokes aside is maybe the sweetest part of the whole show, which is this little tiny refrigerator art. I just can't get over it. I love touching art. <laughs> it always feels so illicit. This one more time. So right, it's like everything in the world has changed. I've been thinking a lot about my job, getting a new job, how to re-engage with society. And there's this piece here, which Kristen made as an audition for a job at an animal sanctuary. And I just love how encouraged I am by looking at this and seeing that this is a job candidate who is really willing to go the extra mile to demonstrate their ability to interact successfully with the clientele of that business and I just see Kristen really shining as like a sheep or a goat here she's a goat standing on a sheep's back feeding this bald eagle some smart food the bald eagle might need to be a little smarter so I think that's probably helping out a lot doing yoga with cheetahs it just really makes me feel like she's a capable candidate and it really helps me feel like bolstered to have that kind of can-do attitude same with all these trophies I don't know about you guys but I feel really celebrated by seeing like a hot glue gun trophy as an artist who uses hot glue guns a lot. It's meaningful for me to see that tool celebrated in the way that the painter palette so often gets the attention, you know, a big moment for the hot glue gun. But I would be remiss not to specifically point out the, the horse on the level because I don't know if anything looks more like 2020 than this horse on a level down here trophy that Oh That's God. just telling the whole story. Hey okay, again. <laughs> um, another thing that's really nice about this show is that it really affords the opportunity to get intimate with art. So I love this piece that is a bench that places you too close to the video to really be able to watch it. But it also just makes me feel like I'm hanging out with Kristen, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and Kristen, you'll see in the videos, hangs out with Kristen a lot. So it's like, I get to hang out with Kristen, hanging out with Kristen, endless opportunities for meaningful social engagement. Um, King's all here. Yeah, totally COVID safe. I also like, you know, these pieces with the tiny furniture make me think a lot about George Millet actually, and some like early cinema where we have these kinds of tricks of perspective. I just think it's really sweet to think about um, living in these worlds. Oh, hey, Rachel. Hi again. I wanted to point out the forest in this part of the exhibition. That calls to mind for me the great Shakespearean notion of Macbeth till Vernon Wood removes to Dunsany and the idea that the forest would come to the castle signifying its ultimate demise. I don't know that I think that this forest is so foreboding, but it does seem mobile. And when I think about trees on the go, I think they might want to watch out a little. Over here, there's sort of a trompe l'oeil effect where the forest moves from the physical space to the image space. And then again, this sort of deathly reminder of the potential of what can happen to these trees in the form of this crate bench. Well, this is really important because we know that dressing appropriately for the situation is a really big deal, especially now. And I really like the opportunity to be able to be completely immersed in space. Um, Joan Jonas once told me that when you put on a hat, you get to be a different person. I think that's really true. So I guess now I'm almost Kristen. I just need a hoodie, which I don't have. But 
The clothing rack. It's really sweet. I heard that this is the artist's favorite hat to wear. I think um, a good framework for me with this show is really like thinking about it as a user's guide to surviving a new socially distant world. It's like how to get along with yourself, how to explore the world on your own terms, how to be inside and outside, what it means to be at home, and most importantly, that if you're apprehensive about the future, you should invest in rocks. Can't go wrong. Yeah, where's Ursula's fantasy world? A giant human ear. She loves human ears. <laughs> Lots of dirty underwear. She loves dirty underwear. What else are you into, Ursula? Dogs. A world full of dogs. And the winner is yeah. Yeah. What's gonna happen to me?